Well, everybody, man, I have a treat in store for you today. You don't know him yet, but you're about to get to know him. My friend Nathan, his wife Becca, are here today. And Nathan's going to be speaking and sharing with us as we kind of kick off uh, this season of putting God first in prayer. And Nathan and I, when you say about relationships, when you say we go way back, like that's very true for us. So we go way back to uh, the early 2000s, and we were in a discipleship program together back in the day. And uh, and, and it's just funny to, to look back where we were to where we are now. Now. And uh, so exciting to see all that God has done through Nathan. Nathan has done many, many things, uh, but he's a teaching pastor at Summit Park Church. And Summit Park Church is, I feel like, it's just like kind of our partner church. And so my best friend, Scott Obrimsky, pastors there. And uh, incredible place in Lee Summit, Missouri, a couple hours away. And uh, But Nathan's been a pastor for a long time. And just honored to have you here today, man. And he's going to tell you about his amazing family a little bit. But I'm so excited for what he has to share. Incredible communicator. So we're in for a treat today. Rock Hills, would you, like you've never done it before, would you give it up for my friend Nathan? Come on now. We, we talked about him giving me a holy kiss, you know, as we were exchanging there, but we didn't want to embarrass you guys, of course. So, hey, how are you guys doing? Good, good. Hey, want to first start off and welcome all those that are watching online as well as those that are deployed in our military. Thank you so much for all that you do. Would all of you put your hands together for all those that are watching online. So glad that you're with us today. Hey, and I, I do want to say a big thank you to Troy and Lacey just for um, their example of faith. I've been able to watch from a distance, but we've kept relationship, talked to us several times over the years, and it's just been fun to see how God has used you guys and used your leadership, your faithfulness, your example, and man, you're the real deal. Like behind the scenes, you're just laughing all the time, having fun, genuine, and anybody that knows you uh, behind the scenes knows that about you. What you are on stage is what you are behind the scenes, so we just thank you so much and all that God is doing through you is truly amazing. Would all of you, would you show your appreciation to Pastor Troy and Lacey? Super cool. Hey, I want to introduce you to my family. So I think we've got a picture that we could show you here. So throw up a picture there. So there's my family. Uh, my wife, Becca, is here with us. And then our two children, Ella's there on the right. She's 12 years old. And then Mac there on the left. He's 10 years old. So love my family. They're awesome and amazing. And uh, they make me better and are way more than I ever deserve. So I'm so thankful for, for them. Um, well, hey, let's, uh, let's jump into today's message. Today's message is titled, uh, This Time is Different. This Time is Different. So it was several years ago that uh, this happened. Um, I don't know if you've ever had a car like this to where uh, it burns oil. Okay, anybody got a car like that? You've had a car that burns oil. Okay, so I had a car that burned oil, and uh, Jiffy Lube at the time had a deal to where if you got through your oil change there, in between oil changes, you could get it topped off. I was like, this is going to be great. I'm going to make them go bankrupt with my car. Like this, I'm going to get this thing topped off all the time. So I was, I was driving my car. I was like, you know what? I think it needs topped off. So I decided to stop by Jiffy Lube. I pull in, stay in the car, and I pull in. They pop the hood. Technician looks under the hood and then comes around. And says, um, excuse me, sir, have you seen what's under your hood? And I said, no. He said, come here. So I walk around, and I, and I look under the hood, and there's a big pile of leaves by the serpentine belt. Like on the top, there are big pile of leaves. They start pulling back the, the leaves, and there's little baby squirrels inside of there just, just living. Okay, so they, they took care of the squirrels. They took care of the leaves, all that stuff. So they got it all cleaned up, top off my oil. Well, then uh, about a month later, Becca was going to be out. And she was going to be doing some stuff. So I said, hey, babe, would you just stop by Jiffy Lube? It's real simple. Just pull in. Tell me you need the, the oil topped off. And uh, they'll know what to do. So she pulls in. And, and they pop the hood. The tech looks underneath the hood. The tech comes around and says, uh, ma'am, have you seen what's underneath your hood? I said, no, I, I haven't. She said, come here. And so she walks around. And another pile of leaves right there at the serpentine belt. Well, this time they didn't have any squirrels in it. So they get it all cleaned up. Well, the manager comes out and says, ma'am, you're not going to believe this, but about a month ago, your dad came by with the exact same problem. Okay, so here's the thing. My wife, for some reason, isn't aging like she should. 
I'm like, she has these, like, creams and potions and stuff. Like, no, 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 you need to draw wrinkles on your face, babe. Like, I'm aging like a normal person. But, no, she is my wife, and we, those are our two children. We brought them into the world. So, anyway, she, it's, it's, it's pretty funny um, what's happened over the years. <laughs> In fact, one time we were at a, I, I wasn't going to tell this story, but I just thought I would. But one time we were at a hotel. We were staying the night, and um, our kids were a little bit littler. And we were at the Continental Breakfast. Babe, I didn't say I was going to tell this story. I'm so sorry. I probably... Okay, so I'm going to tell it to you. So we were, we were having our continental breakfast, and I went up to get my toast or something, and she's sitting at a table, and there's an older lady sitting at another table next to her, leans over and says, hey, let me know if you need help, okay? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So anyway, yeah, we've had some interesting stories over the years, so. But hey, let's jump into today's uh, message. You know what's uh, interesting? If, if you want this year, 2023, we're at the beginning of the year, if you want that to be different, it's not something that we could just hope for or just want. There's something that we have to do different. You know, I was leaving the car that had the, the squirrels making their little habitat underneath the hood. I kept dry, uh, parking it in our driveway. I wasn't putting it in our garage because our garage was full of stuff. Well, I should have cleaned out my garage, pulled it into the garage, and the squirrels wouldn't have got in there. But I kept doing the same thing, and I kept getting the same result. And so today I want to answer two questions. All right, here's the first one. Can 2023 be the best year yet? Can it be different than all the other years you've experienced? And the answer to that question, I believe, is yes. And here's the second question. Well, how is that possible? How could 2023 be different this time? Maybe 2022 was tough for you. Maybe it was a good year. But here's what I believe, that the best is yet to come, that God has more for you that he wants to do and accomplish in your life. But in order for that to happen, he expects something of us, that we have to do something different. And so what I want to, to do today is I want to look at Psalm 27, because I believe that Psalm 27 is a great outline and example for us of how we can do life. And as we do that, then God responds to us. Okay, so Psalm 27, if you've got your Bibles, you can turn there, but I'll give you a little bit of context of what Psalm 27 is all about. So this is a Psalm of David. He wrote many of the Psalms. And David was a guy who was the second king of Israel. The first king was King Saul. And uh, David had become a part of the military when King Saul was the king. And in fact, David was very successful. And King Saul was a guy who was a big guy, but he was very insecure. He had a lot of issues. Eventually, he was very disobedient to the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm going to pull the kingdom from you. I'm going to take the kingdom from you. Because how it worked in that day was you would have a king that would pass on the kingdom to their son, and then they would become king. But God said, that's not going to happen anymore. I'm going to give the kingdom to somebody else. Well, at that time, David was being very successful. So Saul started to put two and two together that maybe David was going to be king. He perhaps even heard about the prophecy that Samuel had anointed David as the next king. And so King Saul was very insecure and eventually was trying to kill David. It's one of the, the big stories in the Old Testament. And so Saul is chasing after David. David, who was fighting in Israel's army, fighting the battles, winning victories for Israel, for King Saul, now is eventually running from the own, his own army that he served in. And so King Saul is after him. And so many scholars believe that, that Psalm 27 is David's response, is him in the midst of running from King Saul. So this first one I want to cover, I want to cover four things today that will help you make 2023 different, okay? So this first one that we're going to talk about is fear. So I want, to, I want you to think about this thought. Not knowing how to deal with fear, our fear will rob us of God's blessing, peace, and growth opportunities in 2023, not knowing how to deal with our fear will rob us of God's blessing, peace, and growth opportunities in 2023. But for this time to be different, we have to deal with our fears. So that's the first one is deal with our fears. Deal with our fears. Okay, so Psalm 27, here's what it says in verse, verse 1. This is David talking. He says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Look what David does right at the beginning here. He declares who God is to him. He says, you're my light, God. You're my salvation. You're the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Let me ask you by a show of hands in here. How many have ever been afraid? Been afraid? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, you were probably afraid to raise your hand. 
So all of us technically have been afraid. Okay, at this point. So we've all been afraid. There was one time in my life when I was afraid. Okay, there was one time when I was afraid. And, um, you know, I'm just going to kind of speak up for the men here, all right, just for, for a second. Now, I know I'm sure uh, labor is very difficult for women, but I just want you to know it's difficult for men too, okay? Okay, so we have got two kids. Our first one, Ella. I had never experienced this before, okay? My, my wife decided she's not going to take any pain meds. She's not going to do an epidural or anything. And so here she's going through these, like, contraction things. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, my wife is going to die. Like, look at her. She's going to die, and then everything would be okay. And I was like, no, she's going to die again. She's going to die again. It just kept happening over and over. Eventually I was like, give me the epidural. Just put it right there in my neck. I need it. Very scary, people. It was very scary. Do any of the ladies have sympathy? No, you don't. You don't. Okay. <laughs> neither does my wife. You know, neither does my wife. She's like, shut up. <laughs> Been afraid. Here's, here's the reality. If we don't deal with our fears, we're not going to be able to experience the blessing. You're going through all that pain. Eventually, you get a baby. We got Ella, who's such an amazing blessing. But we had to deal with the pain. We had to deal with the fear first. And you know what? A lot of you, a lot of times in my past, I've had to deal with fear in my life. And that keeps the blessing out of our lives. God wants us to experience the best in 2023, but what will keep us from that is fear. So here David is telling us how to deal with fear. All right, so we got to deal with our fear. So what he, what he says is, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. You ever stubbed your toe in the dark, in a dark room? Isn't it the worst? Isn't it the worst? It's almost like God put more little like sensors in your little toes and you seem to find the edge of it's like it's like if, if you had the light on a video camera, it's almost like you picture yourself just going over there intentionally hitting it. It's like, no, I didn't mean to do that. But when the lights are off, you don't know where you're going. You stub your toe. You know, as kind of an illustration, that's a lot of the, the human experience. If you think about it. It, it, you can't see the, the future in front of us. You know, we none of us know what's in front of us. We don't, we don't know for sure what the future is. We, we, we've not experienced that yet. And behind us is the past that's locked in place. You can't change it. It's locked in place. It's almost like the human condition is walking around in darkness. All you've got is the present. You know, like, okay, I can, if I'm walking around in a dark room, I, can, I know where I am. I know where my body is. And that's where we are. We're in our present right now. But the future, we don't know for sure. And the past, we can't change. And what David is looking at his life, and he's saying, you know what? I don't know the future. I'm running here from my former boss, or my boss, you could say. I thought I was supposed to be king. I thought that I was supposed to be. I don't know the future for sure. I can't change the past. But you know what? I'm, I'm going around in darkness. But here's the reality. I know who does know the future. And I do know the one that, though this has happened in the past, he can change my future as if it didn't even happen. It's like he's saying, God, you're my light. You're the one that can light up this room for me, and you can help me to know where to go. I mean, imagine if every time in 2023 you said, you know, I don't know the future. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know the one who does. I can trust in him. I can hope in him. And you know what? God is going to be my light. All of a sudden, your fears, they start to dissipate. You know, I don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen tomorrow. Even though I can't see it, I know the Lord sees it. He's my light. And if he wants to illuminate something, then he can show me. So David declares, he is my light. And that was his antidote for fear. Here's another thing that, that David does. He says, the Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my salvation. You know, David was a, a, an amazing warrior. He had been trained. He had lots of victories. He had won lots of battles. Like he knew how to use a sword. He knew how to fight. He knew how to win. But yet, I believe this. You see this in David, that he was humble. He, he believed this principle that would later be written by his own son, Solomon, in Proverbs 21, 21 31. says this, the Lord is, or the, the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. You know, David doesn't say he is his salvation. He says, the Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my rescuer. The Lord is the one that's going to help me. Though I've got all these skills, yes, that's all great and all, but you know what? God is the one who rescues me. You know, as we look into 2023, it's really important that we make sure that our rescuer isn't something else besides the Lord, that the Lord ultimately is our salvation. Like he's the one that's going to rescue us, you know, because we can look to other things to rescue us, right? We can look to money to be our rescuer. Money's a terrible rescuer. <laughs> There's never enough. It always seems to fly away. You know, we can look at our, our clever plans 
You know, it could be our rescue. We're gonna look to ourselves, our own talent, our own ability. We could look to another person. You know, some of us, I don't want you to elbow or point to anybody, but your mouth is a bit of a rescue. You could talk your way out of anything. You know anybody like that? Don't look at them, okay? Don't, if they're seated right next to you. That's your rescuer. You look to that to rescue you. But you know what? God should be our rescuer. He's our salvation. He's the one we put our hope in. He's the one we look to. And David is saying, you know what? I've got these skills. I've got this ability. I've got the sword. I've got all this armor. I've got all this stuff. And I might be a great warrior. But you know what? God is the one who gives me the victory. He's my salvation. When I'm up against something challenging, you know who I'm going to look to? I'm not going to be afraid because if I trust in my sword, then I'm going to be, I should be af afraid. I'm going to make the horse ready for the day of battle. But you know what? I believe that Jesus is my rescuer. He's the one that's going to give me the victory. That's what we have to remember as we go into 2023. That's how we deal with our fears. And this is the last one here. The Lord is my stronghold. The Lord is my stronghold. You know, back in that day, um, when they built cities and towns and stuff, they would build big walls around it because you'd have an invading army could come in and just wipe out people. And so they, to give them time to prepare and to discourage other armies just from coming in and, and wiping people out, they build these large walls. And it's like David is saying that about God, this stronghold, or another translation says fortress. It's like this place where, where there's, there's these walls where you could be inside the city, the town, and you could do your business. You could do whatever you need to do. You could go about your day. You can live your life and make decisions, but you can know that there's protection on the front, behind, and on the sides. And you know, whatever you make God your stronghold, you know, you can make decisions. You could do life. In 2023, you can walk about the cabin, so to speak. You can know that God is with you and is going to help you, and you don't have to be captivated by fear. You know, with a, this many people here, I bet there's some people in here today that you're just, you just walk around with fear. There's just this constant feeling of fear, almost like there's no walls around where you live, so to speak, that there's no walls around your soul, and God wants to be your fortress. God wants to be your stronghold. God wants to help you and to know that you are secure. You can make decisions. You do not have to be afraid. So David, what he does is he, he says that, Lord, you're my light. Okay, you can guide me and direct me. Lord, you're my salvation, you're my rescuer. And Lord, you're my stronghold. Yes, I can do whatever I need to do. I can trust in you. And then this is what he, he says. There's two rhetorical questions in that verse one. He says, whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? What if in 2023, you could say that about your life? Say, what do I have to be afraid of? I don't have to be scared. I don't have to be worried. You know, when you do that, you open up God's blessing to your life. You open up an opportunity for God to work in and through you and your family, everything that you do. You open up a chance for God to say, okay, you're not afraid, you trust in me. You believe I'm, I'm your light, your salvation, your stronghold, your fortress. Okay, now I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna work in your life. And all of a sudden, man, life is so much better because you don't have to be afraid. Okay, here's a, here's a second one. We're gonna continue to read on a few verses here. Actually, before I give you that second one, let's keep reading down uh, Psalm 27. It says this, verse two, when the wicked advance against me to devour me, it's my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. You know, he, he's saying, even if the worst happens, even if the worst of worst takes place, you know, I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be scared. I don't have to be worried. Can you say that about 2023? Say, God, I, I trust in you. Even if the worst happens, I don't know the future, but you know what? I don't have to be afraid because God, you're mine and I'm yours and, and we got this. Even if an army came against me, most of us probably don't have an army coming against us, but David did. And he can know that, hey, I can tr if I'm trusting in God, I'm confident that, God, you're going to rescue me. That's what David says. Okay, verse, verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's so good. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock, and then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Here's the second point. If we want 2023 to be even better, 
then we have to do the second point, deal with our hearts. Deal with our hearts. This really, as, as you read this, this is talking about David's spiritual life and what it was all about, what his, his commitments were, what, what they were like. And for David, he desired just to be with God. You know, the temple wasn't built quite at that point, but temple was just a place, a, a phrase you could say that would be a place where God would dwell. And there was a place where, where the people would go and they would meet with God. And that's what David was talking about. He's like, man, I just wanna go there. I just, wherever God is, that's where I wanna be. Wherever God is, is um, his people are, that's where I wanna be. His heart was, God, I just wanna be with you. I just wanna know you. You know, this is really, really important for us because maybe, maybe I, I've been in this trap before to where we can often go to God seeking his hands, meaning wanting something from him when God wants us to seek his face. You know, we could, we could want something from God, but God's really saying, hey, I just want you to come be close to me. I want you to, to chase after me just because I'm me. I want you to worship me, not to get something from me, but so I can just, I can honor you and bless you, you know, here in a minute, but let, let's, just, let's just glory in my glory for a second. Let's just take a moment to where you seek my face, you chase after me. And what's really cool about that is that David was, that was his heart. In fact, here in a couple of verses, we'll see that David was seeking the, uh, the face of God. But even when we seek God's face, we just put him first. We just make him priority. We just say, God, I'm gonna put you number one in my life. As we do that, then God says, okay, I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna work in your life. Because there's a bit of it. You see it here in verse, in verse five, it says, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe. So again, we just read verse four. One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. And then verse five, look what God does. God says, in the day, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. You know, there, there might be some times in 2023, there's a day of trouble, right? There, there's probably gonna be some tough moments that are gonna happen in 2023 for you. This is not a guarantee. Just because we seek the Lord, we honor God, we chase after him, it's not a guarantee that there's not gonna be some hard times, some difficult things. There's gonna be the day of trouble. You know, there might be a, a recession. You know, there, there might be in your own personal life like a, uh, some kind of health diagnosis. There could be a conflict in your family. You might have a teenager in your home. <laughs> you know, there could be some real challenges in, in your life. But you know, whenever we, we set ourselves, our face to seek God's face, whenever we, we put him first in all that we do, man, it makes all the difference in the world because in the day of trouble, that's when he's gonna protect us. And here's what I love about it. If you, you look on in verse six, it says this. Actually, the end of verse five says this. And he set me high upon a rock. So in the day of trouble, just when it's like, hey, I just like, you to protect me. I just don't want anything to go bad. Let's just get through this. You know, no, David says, no, no, you're going to set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted, it says, above the enemies who surround me. In other words, it's like, I believe, God, that you're, I'm not just going to make it through it. I believe you, I'm going to do even better. I believe that you're going to bless me in a huge way. I believe that, God, you're going to come through for me. I know this is a tough situation. God, what do you want to teach me? through this challenging circumstance, but God, I believe that you've got more. And so David said, you know, things are bad right now. Things are not good right now. Today is the day of trouble for me, but God, even in the midst of that, I still believe and trust that you're able to work in my life and you're gonna help me. And the key to that happening in David's life was right before that, he set his spiritual life in order. That's why I love what we're doing with 21 days of prayer and fasting. You're saying, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna set my heart in the right spot. I'm gonna seek the Lord. I'm gonna put him first. You know, 2023 is gonna be characterized by not chasing a bunch of other things. It's gonna be ultimately characterized by putting my face to seek the Lord's face. I'm gonna chase him. I'm gonna run after him. And that's what David does here in, in the second part of Psalm 27. So then it says, verse seven, it says, hear my voice then when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. Here's that, that verse about seeking his face. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Here's the third one. Deal with our prayer life. Deal with our prayer life. 
Here's where David's starting to get really like vulnerable and real because he, he started out the psalm, the prayer, by saying like, Lord, you're my light, you're my salvation, you're my fortress. But now he's kind of like getting a little more vulnerable. Like, God, don't forsake me. Like you see all the do nots in here. You know, be merciful to me and answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. Do not reject or forsake me. Obviously here, David is, is dealing with a little bit of concern about being rejected. You know, have you ever done this in, in your prayer time to where you're, you're like, God, I trust in you. I believe in you. And then you start to think about your circumstances like, oh God, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm concerned. God, I, I'm afraid. You know, I think that's actually really powerful in prayer. You know, think of it like this. Like um, uh, if you were sawing down a, a tree, I don't know if you guys saw down trees much here in Kansas. We don't in Kansas City either. Okay, so, um, but imagine sawing down a tree, and it's a large tree, you know, and, and you had a big saw, and you had one uh, person on each side, and you're going back and forth to chop, chop down the tree. You could think of what David is doing is saying, when he's going one way, he's saying, Lord, you know, you're my light. I trust in you. I believe you're going to guide my steps. But then he pulls it back this way, and he's like, but I'm really scared. Are you really going to help me? <laughs> like, I'm really worried here. He says, no, 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 no. But, but God is, you're my salvation. You're my rescuer. I'm like, but God, I got to be honest with you. My gut just is, is really in pain right now. I am terrified right now. You're, are you really going to rescue me? I mean, I'm getting attacked left and right. But you know what? I'm going to, I know that God, you're my fortress. I believe you're my fortress. God, I, I just pray, don't leave me. Don't forsake me in the midst of this. I believe that you've got good plans for me. Well, Lord, I just look out right now and things are not good right now. <laughs> but I believe that you're gonna give me victory, Lord. And you go back and forth, back and forth. You know what you're doing? You're chopping down the enemy's plans in your life. You're, you're, bringing those, you're saying, God, I trust in you. And you're encouraging your faith because every time you say, God, you're my light, you declare the truth that you believe. You're encouraging your faith. But then you're also being genuine and saying, God, I need your help. You're presenting your request. That's what we need to do this year. What if you did that in your prayer life this year? You're, you're chopping down the enemy's plans by saying, God, I declare this truth. I know it to be true, but God, I'm gonna be honest and open with you and vulnerable. I'm terrified right now. And God is pleased with that kind of prayer. In fact, I wanna give you a few more verses on prayer. We'll go through these quickly. But Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You know, maybe you've heard that verse before, but notice it doesn't actually say that God's gonna answer your prayer, at least in this specific text. I believe God's gonna answer your prayer, but it just says that you're gonna experience God's peace. <laughs> I mean, if, even if he didn't answer your prayers, he's going to, as a byproduct of praying and seeking him and chasing after him, talking to him, this year give you peace. How many would love to have a little more peace in your life? Let me just see your hand. Yeah, right here is the answer. Just pray. And then as a bonus, on top of that, he's gonna answer your prayers. How cool is that? Here's what 1 John says, 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we've asked of him. When we pray according to God's will, we can know that God is gonna come through for us. He's gonna help us. Now you say, well, what if I'm praying outside of God's will? Well, then he's probably not going to answer that prayer, but there's a lot of things inside God's will. I've discovered one thing not in God's will is that God, I've been asking him to answer my prayer of growing hair back, and it's just, it's not happening. It's not happening. So that's outside of God's will, okay? But you know what? There's a lot of things in God's will because God wants to do good to people. And he wants to do good for you. And it's simply if we just pray, then it'll be according to God's will. And you know what? He's going to hear you, and if he hears you, he is going to answer. This last verse here that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and, 8, 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. I want to encourage you to continue to take steps in your prayer life this year. And really take advantage of this opportunity in 21 days of prayer and fasting. To be a person of prayer. It's, it's really simple. I you know, what you can do is just say, okay, I'm gonna pray in the same place at the same time every day. It can be five minutes, it can be 10 minutes. I encourage you to come here and to pray with us, you know, as you're having that, that time to, to pray together. 
but for the next 21 days. But you do it the same place, same time. And you simply start out by thanking God for all that he's done. Thank him for your family. Thank him for your, your job. Thank him for your house. Thank him for all that he's done, certainly for salvation and forgiveness and the hope of the future and, and heaven to come. Thank him for all those things. And then just present your needs to him. Say, so God, I need help today. I need help with my job. I need help with my family. My marriage is kind of rough. God, help me. You know, God delights in that. He wants to hear from you. 2023 will be different if we give attention to our prayer life. All right, this last one here. So verse 10, it says, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Verse 11, teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. This fourth one, deal with what God says. Deal with what God says. When we deal with what God says, 2023, it can be different. You know, the first problem that ever came onto the scene was back in the Garden of Eden when, when the serpent started questioning God or at least made Adam and Eve question God, question what he said. You know, and that can happen to us too. You know, because Adam and Eve, they knew exactly what they were, it wasn't like there was a question. It wasn't like they were just trying to discover and they were on a journey or whatever. Like God clearly said, don't eat of that tree. <laughs> they knew they weren't supposed to eat of that tree. And then the, the serpent says, did God really say? Isn't that what can happen to us when we get away from the, the word of God? when we get away from church, when we get away from hearing the preaching of, of the word of God, when we get away from the people of God, we get away from listening to the Holy Spirit speak to us, when we get away from what God says, all of a sudden that starts impacting what we think. Well, did God really say that? God really mean that? God really talk about that? And that impacts our decisions. And now we're making bad choices, poor choices. You know, this, this happens um, all the time, because because here's why this is important. I, I love how it puts it, how David puts it in verse 11. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. You know, there's some oppressors out there that want to ruin your relationship with God. You know, there, there's some things this year that's going to want to ruin you. And the, the way to keep away from that is to deal with what God says, to let God teach you and stay on the right path. You know, you think about an oppressor could be money. You know, Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 24, you cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You know, that's what I think is so important about, about giving. You know, as, as we're generous, it's dealing with the greed in our hearts. It's saying, God, okay, I don't want that to be my rescuer. I don't want that to be the thing I rely on. I don't want that. God, you're my, you're my provider. And so I trust in you. So I'm giving this, I'm giving this out. You know, because money can become an oppressor. It could be something that will captivate you. It'll be something that will take you bondage. I mean, let me tell you, money is a terrible master. God is an amazing master. He's an amazing Lord, but money can never be that. That's why you can't serve God and money. Something else that's a terrible oppressor is lust. You know, things in our life that we, you know, looking at things we shouldn't look at. That's why, that's why the word of God says in Proverbs 5, 15, drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Okay, all the married people, you know what it's saying there? Okay, I think you know what it's saying there. You say, man, but my husband's got a dad bod. You know, but it's all yours, okay? It's all, all, every part of it, okay? When we get away from the word of God, we, we, start, we start to justify things. We start questioning God. But if you've been reading that in your devotions that morning, you're like, uh-uh, no, not looking at that, not doing that. I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to do the right thing because it's fresh, fresh on your mind. That's why we've got to be in the word of God every single day. You know, maybe it's a, uh, being a workaholic. That's why Proverbs 23, 4 says, don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. It's good to have a good work ethic, but there's a point where you got to say, it's enough. I need to be with my family. I've got other priorities. I've got to, I've got to seek the Lord. I've got to run after him. I'll be fine. I, I trust him as my provider. That's the power of the word of God because it keeps you on a straight path because all these oppressors in 2023 are going to be grabbing at you because you say, no, 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 I've been in the word. I'm going I'm to stay on this straight path right here. I'm going to let God teach me. That's the power of being free in 2023. When we deal with what God says, now this year can be different. We can experience God, God's goodness as you're in the word of God. That's why I love also that you're going through the Bible in a year. That's so cool being able to do that. Man, we did that at Summit Park last year, and we're doing it again this year. It's just so powerful. Every day, a routine. I would just say, I'm going to get into the Word of God. I'm going to learn. I'm going to hear what He has to say. And as you teach me, it's going to keep me on that straight path. It's going to keep me away from the oppressors. Okay, we'll, we'll finish up 
the, the psalm here. It says, verse 12, do not turn away from, do not turn me over to the desires of my foes for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. Then verse 13, listen to this. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Isn't that so good? Verse 13, I'm confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is coming from a guy who's running from King Saul. And yet he's like, I'm confident. I'm gonna see the goodness of God in the land of the living. What if that was maybe a, a theme verse for you for 2023? You know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going to go through, you could always say, you know what? I'm gonna see the goodness of God. Some of you need to just believe that God is good. You live like he's not good. I wanna encourage you today to change your mindset and to say, you know what, going into 2023, it's gonna be different. I'm gonna believe the word of God that God is indeed good and he wants to do good to me. I'm confident I'm gonna see the goodness of the Lord. How does that happen? This last verse, verse 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. So what's so powerful about this, again, time of 21 days of prayer and fasting? It's an opportunity for all of us to just say, okay, I'm gonna wait on God. God, I wanna hear from you. I wanna, I wanna chase you. I wanna, I wanna follow you. I wanna deal with my fears. Help me to trust you. You know, because that can be a journey. But God, help me to trust you and not be afraid. God, I want my heart to be positioned to you. These other things in my life, they're not important. I, I don't want that. So I want to position my heart toward you. I'm going to make sure my prayer life is where it needs to be. I'm going I'm to start seeking you. And then also I want to hear from you. I want to hear your word. I want you to teach me your ways and follow you to keep away from the oppressors. I'm telling you, if you'll deal with each one of those, 2023 is going to be different in a better way. God's gonna work in all of our hearts and all of our lives. Let's take a moment. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? I wanna take a moment here at the end to pray. Maybe you're here today and um, you're, you're, this is your first time or maybe you're new to this or maybe you haven't made a decision to follow Jesus. Let me just tell you, that's the best decision you could ever make. All of this is possible, what I'm talking about today because of what Jesus did. You know, we, we broke relationship with God because of our sin. We did wrong, we did evil, and there had to be justice because of that. But God took the burden on himself. He made things right through Jesus. He, he came in a human form and then he died on the cross, the death that we should have died because of our sins. But he took that on himself. And then he rose from the, the dead, defeating death, hell, and the grave. And that whoever would believe on him might have eternal life not just in the life to come, but right now. That for me happened 14 years ago. And that can happen for you today. So with everyone's heads bowed and eyes closed, I wanna just take a moment. If you're here today, you're like, man, I need to make that decision. I just wanna put my trust in him. I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not gonna call you for it or anything like that. I just want you to just take a moment and say, I need to make that decision. Maybe you made that decision for a long time ago, but you're away from God today. Or maybe you've never made that decision. All of us that are Christians at some point have made this decision to follow Jesus. And it's the best decision you could ever make. God will forgive your sins, give you a new life, new start. He'll transform everything. For me, it was when I was 14 years old and I've never been the same since. I'm never looking back. God will work in your life, but it all starts with that decision. So if you'd like to make that decision today, just with everyone's heads bowed and eyes closed, would you just slip up your hand long enough for me to see it? And then you can put it down. Just slip it up. I'd love to say a prayer with you here at the end of our time. All, all those watching online, you can take a moment to slip up your hand. Let's take, all, I would like all of us to do this. Would you all pray this with me? So just repeat after me, everyone in this room. Dear Jesus, today I recognize that I'm a sinner in need of you. So today I put my trust in you. I put my hope in you. I believe that you're the son of God that died for me. So Jesus, transform my life, change me and make me new. I thank you for your goodness. I pray this in Jesus name. And everybody said a big strong, amen. amen. Come on everybody, put your hands together. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank the Lord. Thanks buddy.